This video was suggested by you guys in my first community poll that I made about six months ago. So in this video, we're going to build a very simple Spring Boot REST API and we're going to play with dependency injection and configuration management, two very powerful features of this framework. And as always, if you want to see a video on a particular topic around software engineering, just drop a comment below and your proposal will be definitely considered. So before talking about Spring Boot, let's see first what a framework actually is. A framework is basically a configurable layer of code usually built on top of the language primitive APIs that contains both logic and abstractions designed to hide tedious tasks that you have to write in order to get some kind of useful result. For example, if you want to build a plain Java application that handles HTTP requests, you'd have to work with socket server APIs to manage connections. You'd have to write code that ensures the compliance with HTTP protocol, which involves a lot of complex work. For that reason, web frameworks were created like Spring Boot, Vertex, Micronaut, Jetty, and many others. All that complex logic is implemented and tested by very smart developers, and your only job is to integrate the framework in your application and to understand how that framework can be configured in order to fit the needs of your application. Now, you may wonder, what is the difference between a framework and a simple library? Well, there are two main differences. A library is mainly designed for code reuse, while a framework is designed to act like a structural backbone of your application. It provides mechanisms to extend it in different ways. It provides a number of abstractions that you should follow when you develop your application on top of that framework. And also a framework usually uses a number of libraries to do its job. So usually when you choose a framework for your application, you should kind of follow the design imposed by that framework. And it's not always straightforward to diverge from it. So with that said, let's see why Spring Boot is such a popular framework in the JVM ecosystem. First, to create the simplest Spring Boot REST API starting from an empty Java project, you just have to add three lines of code. You need to import a Spring Boot starter web dependency, you need to add a Spring Boot application annotation to your main class, and you also need to say Spring Boot application.run and plug in your main class and the command line arguments. And that's it. You have a basic REST API listening on port 8080 for HTTP connections. Now to tell the app how to handle a GET request, we need to add a REST controller annotation annotated class and the method annotated with get mapping which contains a particular API path and returns something, for example a string. Spring Boot allows us to capture variables passed in the request path using the path variable annotation, which is a really convenient feature when your clients want to request dynamic content from your API. Also you can define methods that handle post requests by using the post mapping annotation and you can extract the JSON payload received in the request body into a plain old Java object. And as you can see, everything happens out of the box. You just have to play around with those annotations and Spring Boot does all the heavy lifting for you. Now, from a code design perspective, REST controller classes should be used to define the input output contracts for your application, or in other words, the way clients should call your app and what they should expect back. Your application may contain some more complex logic, which should be implemented in classes annotated with service annotation. This doesn't add any particular functionality to this class. It only registers this class into the Spring Boot dependency injection system. My first video on this channel talks about dependency injection with Juice. So I recommend you take a quick look there to see a good example of that. But in this case, Spring Boot comes with a built-in dependency injection system that doesn't require any upfront configuration. If you want to have a class registered in a dependency injection system, or in other words, to be injected or provided in other classes, you just have to annotate it with component. And if you check the definitions of service and REST controller annotations, you'll see that they contain component as a base annotation, because this is what Spring Boot is looking for when it selects the classes to be added in the dependency injection system. Now to inject an object, you just have to add that class as a constructor parameter, and an object of that class will be provided by Spring Boot when the class is instantiated for the first time. If that class depends on other classes that need to be injected, Spring Boot does this transparently for us, you don't have to specify anything more. Quick pause. If you want to learn more about Spring Boot, I created a one hour crash course on Udemy where you can learn how to build an end to end Spring Boot REST API that connects to an external HTTP API and to a local MySQL database to store data. Feel free to check out the course by using the discounted links that you can find in the video description. Now, back to Spring Boot, one of the most powerful features of this framework is the way it can be configured. You just have to create a file called application YAML in the resources directory and you add there any kind of configurations that you want. For example, if you want to change the port on which the application is running, you just have to say server port equals 9090 and on the next run the server will start listening on this new port also if you want to save your application logs into a dedicated file you just have to add this simple config and your logs will be stored in the newly created file under the root directory of your project those are only two configs out of hundreds of supported configs as you can see from the documentation page so that's a very short overview about spring boot framework i really hope you found that video useful make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and i'll see you in the next one